How does this stuff pertain to me? I want to know what the two of you did to cause me to fly my aircraft into the ground. We're getting to that. But first, let me touch on another of my specialties, vestibular illusion. Without good, valid visual cues, the vestibular and other orienting senses can quickly cause orientational illusions. Your semicircular canals detect movement above a certain threshold, which varies from pilot to pilot. A slow roll below that threshold would not even be detected. A relatively insensitive pilot could roll past 90 degrees in less than 12 seconds and not even know it. On the other hand, you can be convinced that you're tumbling when you're not. But then all you pilots are aware of that. But one of the best things about your internal gyros, from my point of view, is the ease with which you become acclimated to whatever attitude you're flying, right or wrong. Another point is your perception of time is affected by what you are doing. When busy, pressed, stressed, preoccupied, or distracted, time flies. Unanticipated warning lights may tie you up much longer than you realize. I have other tricks at my command, like my most recent one, euphoria. Anyone want to challenge me on euphoria? Yeah, yeah. It took a lot of engineering design to get today's aircraft to give the ride that they do. Take your aircraft, for example. The unobstructed wraparound canopy and low rails. The tilt-back seat, the cockpit location well forward of the wing, the rapid droop of the nose all combine to give you the sensation of being on a magic carpet. It produces a false sense of contentment, of euphoria. Your instrument cross-check gradually decreases because you don't perceive the need. And I've got you. Do you know what it is to be unrecognized? as an unrecognized spatial disorientation? That's what happened to you. You know, you are climbing out, distracted, unaware that you are under my control. You are unaware that you are slowly rolling over onto your back. Your aircraft attitude felt right, felt comfortable, and when you needed it most, you gave up your instrument check. So that's what happened to me. There are three types of disorientation. Unrecognized, recognized, and incapacitated. The extremes vary from the unrecognized, which you had, to incapacitated. This occurs when roll rates exceed the fixating capacity of the eye, blurring everything. In recognized, the pilot is alerted that something is wrong, either with his sensations or with his ability to fly the aircraft. And now, here's the good part. He may or may not actually recognize that his problem is spatial disorientation. Time becomes distorted. Things take longer than you think. There's a tendency to want to blame something, the instruments, or the control system. A powerful sense of expectancy can override what is. The pilot sees what he expects to see, or what he wants to see. And then, my favorite conflict of them all is the one between the will and the skill, the primitive and the rational. Why did you let him in on this? The captain was 30 years old, had seven years in the cockpit, and 1,500 flying hours. He already knew these things. Now you might as well tell him about visual dominance. Not yet. Visual dominance is the key. Let's start with conditions. If you want perfect conditions for illusions to manifest themselves, try night weather formation flying, and you probably have the most likely of all conditions to produce disorientation. In some aircraft, avionics, displays, and switches are vertigo traps, and they require substantial head movement, which can tumble your gyros and break up your instrument cross-check. You begin switching back and forth between instrument flying and visual flying, a condition likely to produce disorientation. Extreme accelerations such as afterburner takeoffs at night or takeoffs into IMC, abrupt rolls or pulls can lead to some very upsetting vestibular inputs. There are remedies. Be aware in limited visibility with limited horizon, black hole or whiteout conditions that your aircraft is not on rails. If you go heads down too long with a warning light or working your radar or stare too long at a false target, you're setting yourself up for an insidious slow roll and descent. 
I can tell you these things now because there's no way you can reveal my secrets. You've got to determine the misorientation before it gets out of hand. Fatigue, psychological and self-imposed stresses all impact a pilot's ability to cope with spatial disorientation. You have to be able to recognize that you have a problem and not the aircraft. Even when you suspect you're disoriented, you're only halfway down the road to recovery. To cope with disorientation, you have to rely on all your resources. Effective flight instruction, a highly developed and disciplined instrument cross-check, practice, event proficiency, and finally, make your instruments read right regardless of your sensations. If you have an autopilot, consider using it. If disoriented and single ship, lean forward to concentrate on those instruments, not your HUD. Make your attitude direction indicator read straight and level for 30 to 60 seconds to settle your gyros. Cross-check all your instruments and avoid fixating attention on any one thing. When flying formation, avoid excessive head movements. Sneak a peek at your gauges by using eye movement only. Lead should communicate attitude information to his flight. Avoid abrupt acceleration. Execute turns and roll out smoothly and gently. Any unexpected attitude changes can disorient the wingman. If disoriented when flying in formation, get to VMC if practical. VMC will give you the horizon and allow your wingman to look around. Remember that lost wingman procedures are to ensure aircraft separation. They are not to recover a disoriented wingman. The key is anticipation. Force yourself to increase your cross-check. Have a plan and be able to execute it. If you're disoriented and you know you are, and you're unable to control the aircraft, if you're out of control with no hope of recovery, get out. That aircraft is going to hit the ground with or without you. Instrument flying is a complex skill. Decoding with focal vision the information on the attitude indicator and other instruments. This ultra-complex skill is very fragile. It's your weak spot, your Achilles heel. But what happened to me? You said you would tell me. You were doing all right until during the pull-off. You had established a left climbing turn. You turned your head and then suddenly flew into a cloud. A warning light on the left console came on, the aircraft battery fail light. And because the left console lights were inoperative, it was hard to find and activate the EPU switch in the dark. But it was an emergency. Listen, you got distracted and your cross-check stopped. Your ambient cues told you that you were under control when in fact you were not. Your aircraft slowly and subliminally rolled to the right. When you finally glanced back at your instruments, you misinterpreted them by 180 degrees. You expected to see yourself in a climbing left turn, and though the HUD indicated an inverted right dive, you saw what you expected to see, and were not alerted that something was wrong. You died relatively comfortable, not recognizing your fatal aircraft attitude.